So I've seen everything that's in here, but it's also going to be a little bit fresh because I don't fucking remember. Also, I don't remember who sent me the links or the link to this first video we're going to do. I managed to find the second one on my own because sometimes I can find things because I saw the title. I said, okay, anyway, we'll get to that. I think it was Edward, but I can't remember for sure. When I get around to doing the show notes, maybe I'll look it up and give you proper credit in the show notes. But to whomever sent this to me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you've listened to me for a while, you know that the drama between Maddox and Dick Masterson has been endless entertainment to me. Uh, And the Dick Masterson, Eric Juneteenth drama, holy shit. I'm behind on everything, of course. I always am. But that is equally hilarious. And now, apparently... Maddox is coming back or something. There's another lull suit. I don't know what's going. I don't know what's going on. I just know that it's funny. Someone sent me this video. It's the Maddox. I had never seen this on my own. All right, this is enough introduction. Let's just get the fuck into this. If you're new around here or you don't know about the Maddox Masterson whole thing, I don't know what to tell you. I'll just say it one more time. All of this is a shame. It really is. This is funny, but it's also sad at the same time because the podcast that Masterson and Maddox did together, The Biggest Problem in the Universe, was, and you can still find them on the internet. I highly recommend listening to them. It was the funniest podcast I've ever heard in my life. The fact that these two couldn't get along, and they can't get along because as we'll explore as we do this video today, they're different and yet they're the same. I can totally see why these two couldn't coexist with each other enough to do the podcast. And But it was those aspects of them. It's the parts where they clashed completely, and then the parts where they were exactly the same and weren't smart enough to know it. That's what made that podcast so fucking funny. I'm telling, I'm dead serious about funniest podcast I have ever heard in my life. Damn, it was funny. All right, let's get started. This is just me procrastinating, not doing the video and fucking around and everything. So let's get started. Addicts, I'm your biggest fan. Oh, Maddox, Maddox, your your opinion of yourself is so inflated. For over 20 years, I've run one of the longest-running humor sites on the internet. Yeah, except that your humor site hasn't been funny for at least the last 10 years. Back in the early days, Maddox's site, what's it called? The it's not the it's the greatest page in the universe or something like that. It used to be funny. I haven't gone there lately to see what he's got up. And really, back in the days, like. Maddox would post like maybe once a month or something like that, and it would be really funny stuff. And he just kind of lost his comedic abilities because he started turning into some kind of wuss master. Although, as we will see in this video, some of some of Maddox's comedic abilities are still there. He's just got to pull the corn cob out of his ass and let them flow. Published books, worked on TV shows, and even video Shitty games. books. Along the way, I've met thousands of fans. Most of them have been awesome, but some, unfortunately, have become obsessed and tried to get into my personal life. And this is a little weird, because I'm watching this thing, wait a minute, is this about Dick Masterson? Or is this about some fan who's stalking him? Because Dick is not his fan. Dick and Maddox were business partners. So it's it's like, Maddox doesn't seem to have the correct context here for this to even this be the happening. story of what happens when fans become stalkers. But, okay, but Dick isn't your fan. He's your business partner. And he's not really a stalker. I mean, Maddox, you're, you're on the internet. You're doing all this stuff on the internet. He's not really stalking you. Maddox and that. Oh, Maddox. Maddox is in- By the way, just in case you're not familiar, so I've always pretty much throughout this whole debate, you know, taken Dick Masterson's side on this and been like, yeah, Dick is right. Maddox is a goofball, yada, yada, yada. And so as the person who alerted me to the existence of this video, 
the person wrote something in his email along the lines of Maddox has fi- finally fired back with something substantial. So I'm like, oh, okay. And so I watched this like, holy shit. No, Maddox actually has some really good stuff in this video that he presents. And not, so I'm looking at this. Well, I'm getting way ahead of myself. But then I watched this video and asked myself, Maddox, why have you sat on this for so many years? Again, maybe there's things going, I don't know. It's internet drama. You know, who knows? Maybe Maddox and Masterson are actually masterminding all this behind the scenes and they're still best buddies. I mean, who knows? Who fucking knows? Maybe Maddox didn't even make this video. Maybe this is generated by AI. Who fucking knows anymore? Okay? I can't sit here and declare to you anything that is truth or fiction. All I can do is tell you that I find this entertaining. Maddox, 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 Maddox. Of all the lies this stalker told about me stalker. during his smear campaign, He's there's one stalker. in particular that stands out okay. as his biggest. Okay. This lie is so big, so big that his entire house of cards would collapse without hmm. it. He's okay. based his entire bullshit narrative on this one big five foot six. 140 pound lie. This lie is about my ex. Oh, and the reason he alleges. And here we yeah, see. And as soon as I saw this, I'm like, oh God, I'm in. Because, as you know, if you listen to the cast, I have made the assertion, the prediction, that Dick Masterson's girlfriend is a tranny. And I said that because of the amount of time that Dick spends defending trannies, but also because of the time that Dick Masterson said. I support trannies because of 80s girl. 80s girl is Dick's name for his girlfriend, for those of you who don't keep up on this drama. And I thought to myself, this is like me saying, this is like if I would say, I'm just pulling, like, I would say I support black people because of Donovan Sharp. Well, there's a connection between my support of black people and Donovan Sharp, right? Donovan is black. If I said, I support Australians because of Adam Piggott, right? So there's a connection in that statement. Australian, Adam Piggott, right? I would never say the sentence, I support black people because of Adam Piggott. I would not say, I support Australians because of Donovan Sharp, right? I would say, I support short people because of Aaron Clary. I would not say, I support support young people because of Rolo Tomasi. So so you see what I'm saying? When you make a statement, I support trannies because of 80s girl, there's a real obvious connection to be made. And so that's the only evidence I had that 80s girl was a tranny. And I took it. I made that prediction. I ran with it. And today we may find out that the great one is wrong. We may find that out because I saw this. I'm like, ah, oh, he blacked out her picture. I'm like, God damn it, Maddox. Really? You're not going to show us 80s girl? Not that I've ever expected 80s girl to be attractive because, I mean, she's dating. I, as I said before, this 80s girl person dated Maddox and Dick Masterson. Her standards can't be that high and she can't be that attractive. The podcast ended. I used to have a show with him. And then uh, I secretly started dating his ex-girlfriend, and he found out, and he melted down and canceled the show. Except that's not true. At least not entirely. While he did start dating my ex, I didn't know about it. I didn't find out about it until after he'd already sabotaged our podcast and our friendship. Well, this here's the question. Who sabotaged what? Our podcast ended because he was caught lying, talking behind my back, and using me for money. It's a very straightforward explanation, but mm. not a very exciting one. And one that you chose not to really present until now, even though Dick's been running around saying that you were the one who was stealing the money and everything else and yada, 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 and the drama. It was disappointing to people who wanted more. Me? I mean, wouldn't it be great I if there was more. something bigger? Some yeah. hidden explanation for great. why things went south? That'd be great. Well, there wasn't. Damn. But that didn't stop Fanboy from inventing a story and running with it. Well, hey, he look. Accused me of- you know, it, it's it's like the opposite of ISOM. 
it has an actual story, and the story is going someplace. All right, maybe the story is just going in circles. But at least Dick, unlike Eric Juneteenth, at least Dick actually has a story. Somehow retroactively ending the podcast because he started dating my ex, which, again, I didn't know about until after the podcast had already ended. He tried to downplay our friendship of nine and a half years to make it sound like less of a scummy move. Doesn't it make you sad? I mean, you used to be like his best friend. Doesn't it make you sad though? Like, you know, the way no, that like- fuck, fuck that shit. <laughs> it's not like Maddox ever met my fucking parents. Here's a picture of me fishing with his dad. <laughs> yeah, I'm really amazing. <laughs> Like I ever, it's not like he ever met my parents. Oh wait, here's a picture of me with his father fishing. <laughs> I mean, come on! And bam, that's hilarious. Liar. Liar. I've met his parents numerous times, and they've had me over for family <laughs> dinners. Hilarious. They've come to live shows I did, and I spent 12 hours on a boat fishing with his dad. But his lying and denying didn't end there. <laughs> he then lied and said that my ex. And oh, Dick. Busted. <laughs> I had been broken up for three or four years when they secretly started dating. Pay attention to how he gradually increases the number of years over time. So three years becomes three or four years. And then eventually he just says it was four. I like, I'm going to be honest to me that, I mean, okay, that, that was a major burn for Dick to say, it's not like he's ever met my parents. And then for Maddox to show up with pictures and video of his parents, that's a major burn. Th this thing about the years. I mean, look, Dick, Dick is a Mexican, you know, he, he's got a small face, he's an internet comedian, to, to it, what's three years or four years to him, I mean, you know, human memory kind of goes to shit, it, this is not really a big deal to me. I started dating Maddox's ex-girlfriend, he'd been broken up with the girl for I think three years, <sighs> three years, something like that, I think it was like three or four years. Also remember, 80s girl is of course going to lie about how long she's been broken up with Maddox. Because 80s girl, as we're going to find out, may not in fact be a tranny and might in fact actually be a biological woman. And if 80s girl is a biologically woman, is a biologically woman, if 80s girl is a biological woman, that would mean, of course, that she is neurochemically incapable of telling the truth. By the way, you know how there's a Turing test? To determine if somebody's an AI or a real person, you, you, know, you ask them, can you say the word nigger? Can you say free Palestine? Can you say, you know, women are not equal to men? You ask them to say things that an AI will not be able to say. I figured out, here's the Turing test. Like if you've got a suspected woman and you're not sure, is this a woman or is it a tranny? Is it a man or a woman? And you want to find out for sure? Here's how you do it. You just say, can you say the phrase, I might be wrong? Because no woman can say the phrase, I might be wrong. Only men can do that. I do that all the fucking time. I might be wrong. You know, I might be wrong. I think that goes over there, but I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure that Maddox is to blame for all of this, but I might be wrong. I think 80s girl is a tranny, but I might be wrong. No woman can say, I might be wrong. Three or four years. From four years ago. Yeah, they'd been broken up for like four years. That's another lie. It was about a year and a half. In fact, she was in the room with us when we started recording the podcast together. The only way his version of events could even make sense is if I had a time machine because I'd already moved on and was dating someone new. My new girlfriend at the time was a girl named Jessica who was Man. a model who liked to play video games and was into metal music. A model who likes to play video games and is into metal music. Okay, I'm gonna need this girl to say the phrase, I might be wrong. I had no interest in getting back together. Although honestly, if, if I was dating something that looked like that, I would not be interested in getting back together with 80s girl either, because that's actually pretty hot with my vindictive ex. But that didn't stop Fanboy from running with this bullshit narrative and calling me names like Cuck, well, which you is are a cuck. very curious insult because not only did it oh. turn out that he was in a polyamorous relationship. Oh, okay. Well, let me, let me see. These things just flash by. He knew what he wanted and he knew the only way to get it was to remove any other option. Dax, D Dax is Dick Masterson for those of you who don't know.
Dick Masterson is his stage name. Dax Herrera is his real name. Dax knew I had never chosen to be a girlfriend or how big a fan I was. Everything. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Yeah, with my ex, which means that she was allowed to sleep with other people, but I've literally had sex with his girlfriend. Maddox Blast. Despite the fact that there is zero. The Maddox Blast thing is pretty gay. But hey, see, I have literally had sex with his girlfriend. That's no funny. evidence for his narrative because, again, the only person who can provide it is me. This narrative caught on with his dumb followers. They somehow view this as some sort of victory, like dating your buddy's ex makes you real manly. That's that's really a good point. Does ugh, man see this is a tough one because I can't lie to you. It depends how hot your buddy's ex is. If my friend's ex is really smoking hot, yeah, it, it makes me a man. But if she's really just average, eh, I, I'm not that much. It doesn't. It makes you seem pathetic and incapable, and it reeks of desperation. I does it? Does it really? I don't know. See, I'm I'm conflicted on that one. I really am. I don't even like to use this word, but it's very beta. For beta. Both of them. <laughs> he sells this macho image of a Lothario who sleeps with all these women, when in reality he's been stuck with my ex for years. No! Women. I'm America's wingman. Let me tell you, get the girl. You ask about her shoes, which is good. You know, you ask about her foot, blah, blah. But he's like, yeah, it's like, dude, this guy's just been fucking my ex girlfriend for years. How much of a fucking stud muffin can he be? It's great. See, that's funny. If Maddox could do more of that and less of dressing up like a banana on the internet, Maddox could be funny again. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Yes! Not the supposed loser's ex. Exactly. It's incredibly funny to think about because I could literally create a Venn diagram of all the places my penis and his mouth have been. That's funny. See, that's good. What, Maddox, why have you been holding back on all of this fucking humor? Venn diagram of my penis and his mouth. That's great. Now, normally I don't like to talk about any of my specific exes because yeah, it's nobody's yeah, yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but because Fanboy has made her such a central part of this and bullshit because it's narrative, funny. and because she's found a way to keep getting involved in my life, uh -huh. I'm going to tell oh. you guys- Oh, wait a minute. So you mean this woman, your ex-girlfriend, has continued to get involved in your life, and now there might be consequences for her? Because here's the thing. See, and get Maddox and Masterson, they were business partners. They had the podcast- Right. So if they want to have the drama between them, like I look at that, like that's fine because they have this history. They did this stuff. Things happen. They're going to have feelings. They're going to have emotions, blah, blah, blah. Like for the two of them to feud, they have a legit reason to feud with each other. Like you can't go to them and tell them, why don't you stay out of each other's business? They knew each other for nine years. They did shit together. You, but then the woman, because the women always need attention, the woman, Yoko Ono-like, has to show up and stick herself into the battle between Dick and Maddox. And it's like, no, 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 bitch, no. Just because you sucked both of these guys' dicks and licked both of their assholes, that does not give you any sort of fucking passport to come into their little drama territory and start peeing all over the place. You need to get your bitch ass into the kitchen and make a pie. All about my stalker ex who's dating my stalker ex. For whatever reason, Fanboy likes to pretend like nobody knows who she is, but uh -oh. we dated for four years and hundreds of my fans have met her and taken photos of us that have been posted online and from there events it is. like Comic Con. Oops. There was even an article written about us, and one of Fanboy's guests blurted out her name on his show. And tens of thousands of people have her name in print because it was published in one of my books as the first person I thanked in the acknowledgement section. Her name is Marie Valenzuela, but Fanboy calls her 80s girl. Fanboy tries to paint her as just some innocent girl who likes to stay out of the limelight and wants nothing to do with YouTube. Uh, She's a teacher. She's a teacher. <clears throat> yes, an innocent girl who doesn't want attention. Sure in LA. She's got nothing to do with YouTube. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to be famous. She doesn't want to be a celebrity. Except that's a lie. She actually did create a YouTube channel and even- So there she is. 
I, you know, I got to admit, it looks like a biological woman. As disappointed as I am by this, because you see, when I said that 80s girl was a tranny, I knew, because I have male biochemistry, male neurochemistry, male hormones, I knew that I could be wrong. She asked me for help with it. Of I course she did. Help. Of course she asked for help. She's a strong, independent woman. How can she start a YouTube channel by herself? key out her green screen but under the condition that I'd replace it with animal attack videos until she learned how to do it herself that's great that's actually that's good see where has this Maddox been your girlfriend comes to you I can't figure out how to key out my green screen will you do it for me yeah I'll do it for you but I'm gonna put animal attack videos on there until you figure it out for yourself that's fucking hilarious that's alpha as fuck if Maddox just grew some hair, he could be a fucking alpha. That is fucking hilarious. Tell me it's not. I will tell you, you're a lying motherfucker. She made a series where she takes out of context quotes from celebrities and tries to paint them as racist. And that is the stupidest idea. That Oh my God, I wish I could find these videos. If anyone finds any of these videos, if they're out there on the internet somewhere, that's what a, that's what a fucking Mexican woman would come up with. I'm going to take quotes out of context from famous people and try to spend them as being racist. And I think that's going to be funny and entertaining. Remember, Republicans decided that they should vote. Remember, female comedians are funny. Hi, and welcome to Out of Context with Marie. I've been watching a lot of Man vs. Food lately, and I noticed that the host says a lot of things that could be considered racist when taken out of context. That's exactly what I've done. Enjoy. That was painful. On one hand, I want to see more of that. On the other hand, I never want to see any of that ever again in my life. He says a lot of things that could be racist if taken out of context. And that's exactly what I've done. I can't figure out how to key my green screen. But that's what I've done. <laughs> Women are funny, just not in the way they think they are. During our four-year relationship, we broke up around six times. And sometimes at the end of a relationship, <laughs> I like to write the girl I dated a thank you letter. That's great. Our four years, we broke up six times. <laughs> oh, Maddox, where have you been? Why have you been doing boring shit for all these years when you have humor inside of you? You just got to let it out where I thank them for the good times and wish them well to try to leave things on a positive note. Yeah, I, that, that's a great idea, but that's just, yeah, those days are over. You, you can't do that with women anymore. I wrote her one such letter during one of the many times we broke up, and it's something that I think everyone should do if things end amicably, which at the time they did. There's nothing really in the letter. It's just a bunch of sappy shit, and it's nothing I intended <laughs> to make public because I shared it with just her. Well, it well, turns out that gee, hey, hey, guys, did you know that information you share only with a woman is actually information that you've shared with the entire world? Because women are not biochemically capable of loyalty. Never tell a woman anything you don't know the entire world to know. Because after you break up with her or she breaks up with you or you break up with each other, she will take this information and she will spread it to the fucking four winds. That letter must have really meant something to her because she kept it. Oh. And then she shared it with Fanboy for the purpose of harassment and humiliation. Now, that's a great point because I remember when Dick had the letter, blah, 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 and he's going on about the letter and he was reading and we'll talk. But anyhow, I never thought of that before. But Maddox is right. She, 80s girl, kept the letter. Like, did she? So did she keep it because, as Maddox says, I must have really meant something to her? Or did she keep it, and this is my theory, because she was just holding on to anything and everything that she would be able to use against him in the future? Because it hasn't been 20 years since they broke up, but when they hit the 20-year mark, you know what's going to happen. 80s girl is going to come on Twitter and announce that Maddox raped her. 
because this is what all women do 20 years after you break up with them is they come back, they've hit the wall, they're old, they're saggy, they can't get as much attention on Twitter anymore, their OnlyFans is dropping off, so they have to accuse someone of raping them. Then Fanboy took my private letter written years ago and tried to use it as some sort of proof that I'm not over my ex. So let's follow this logic here. She hung on to this physical letter years after our breakup, yep. then she shared it as a vindictive attempt to get back at me, and I'm the one who hasn't moved on. Got it. Got it. The he makes a good fucking point. After she gave my letter to the stalker, he then took my letter and started charging money to read it to people. Yes, apparently my writing is so sought after that even a paragraph I wrote years ago is more popular than anything he's ever written. Fanboy took the letter out of context and mischaracterized it as a get back together with me letter, which it wasn't. But that didn't stop him from hyping it up for months because he doesn't have any other content, brand, or identity without No, 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 I, that's not true. That is not true. Dick Masterson has a whole lot of content. He defends trannies. He defends pedophiles. He defends... Furries, he defends tranny pedophiles, he defends tranny furry pedophiles, he defends tranny pedophile furries who are homosexual. Dick, ha that's not true. Dick has a whole lot of content. If you listen to his show, you will know that he's got trannies, homosexuals, pedophiles furries. He's got fuck tons of content. That's just not true. He's a bottom feeder who spends his entire life reliving the glory days he had with me, like a poor man's Al Bundy, who he also <laughs> happens to steal jokes from. Hey, 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 Al Bundy was fucking hilarious, at least for the first like three or four seasons. Married with Children went to shit in the end. And look, let's be honest, Dick Masterson's book, Men Are Better Than Women, is a fucking fantastic piece of literature. If you have not read that book, if you do not own that book, I really recommend that you buy the book. It is hilarious. You will laugh. Make sure you si just sit down. You might have to strap yourself into the chair. Make sure there's no breakable objects nearby because you will be falling out of the chair with laughter. Even though this letter isn't the pathetic get back together with me letter that he wanted it to be, wouldn't it be funny if that letter existed? A sad, sappy, get back together with me letter written mm. by an ex who hadn't moved on. That would. Wouldn't it be funny that if that letter hilarious. existed? Well, it does. Mm. Only I didn't write it. Oh, really? She did. Oh! My ex, Marie Valenzuela, wrote a letter to me after she found out I started dating someone new trying to get back together with me. And her letter is timestamped because it's an email. Oh. Maybe I'll start touring the country with it and violate her confidence like she did mm -hmm. mine. Maybe I'll I hype would. it up for months and then charge money to have it performed on stage. Yes. Or maybe I'll just read it to you right now for free. Oh, uh, thank you. Without further ado, thank here's you. the letter that was sent to me on February 5th, 2015, and we'd only been broken up for one year and three months when she sent this letter, not four years like Fanboy was claiming. Cue the music. Even though we've been broken up for a while now, it really solidifies that you've moved on and that it's permanently over. That's right, baby. I guess I always just figured that in the end, when we were both ready, we'd make our way back to each other. <laughs> we'd make our way back to each other. I know. In other words, you would come crawling back to me because you'd be able to, you'd be unable to find another woman of my caliber because I'm so amazing and the wall is imaginary and I will never hit the wall and you can't help but give me attention because I'm the most important thing in the cosmos. I am the cosmos. It's a selfish way to think as well as totally unrealistic. I know I'm unrealistic, but In I'm a, a way, woman. I guess this is good news for me. I shouldn't cling to the idea of you. <laughs> so maybe it will force you. me to let you go and oh. move on. Oh. It still hurts like hell though. For what it's worth, I will never feel about anyone else the oh. way I did for you. Never. It's not like someone will come along one day and I'll change my opinion on that. Wow. I know for a fact that this is true. Sorry, I fucked everything up. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> that letter sounds like somebody wasn't over me and still isn't because in her own words, she'll never feel about anyone else the way she did for me. But she's dating fanboy. Doesn't that mean... 
Oh, oh no. no. no <laughs> I could have come out with this email years ago, but I didn't want Why anything didn't you? to do with these two vindictive oh, losers. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. You're suing the guy in a fucking court. Of Dude, you, why have you been sitting on this? This is fucking ridiculous. I didn't want anything to do with these two losers. Okay, then why are you suing Dick Masterson in a fucking court of law? Okay, th that is not a fucking valid excuse. Sometimes people have to learn the hard way to fuck off. Yeah. If there were an award given for self-restraint, not sharing this email until now would have earned me the Nobel Prize. He is right about that. I don't know why he sat on this this long. But he should get an award for self-restraint. It's really sad if you think about it, because it, it sounds like she was using fanboy to get back at me. Gosh, kind of does, doesn't it? There's a gets thrown around a lot when a woman uses a guy to get to another guy. Aww. And there's a lot more to the story, like the time she texted me a few months after she sent this email asking me to go to Mexico with her again, knowing I was in a relationship. Or the time that she had a package delivered to my house to have an excuse to come over. Or the time she called me in a panic because her apartment was haunted by ghosts. I'm not kidding, she actually found some ghost hunters to come to her house and exercise it for her. Or the fact women. that she's- But remember guys, women, they understand science. Still owes me thousands of dollars in back rent oh. and personal loans. No, no, no. Okay, dude, no. You don't let the woman live there and not pay rent. You, no. That's that's your fault. She should be behind one month in rent. That's it. Because after she didn't pay the month of rent, should have booted her ass out. That's your fault, Maddox. Oh, did I mention that she owes me money? Of course she owes you money. She's a woman. She owes all of us money. Women are parasites on society. Women pay fewer taxes and they get more fucking benefits. All women owe all of us money. In a video where I've provided tons of receipts, here's one more. A mm. literal receipt written in her handwriting to... So wait, how much does she owe? Let's see how much... For Discover card, $500 left. For, sc for school... Thirteen. You paid for her school. Marie paid six hundred bucks. Eight. That one's paid off. Marie credit card, two thousand dollars. Thousand dollars left. Total due fifteen hundred. Oh Show that God. she was making payments don't, towards loans. That I guys, don't don't fucking pay off your woman's credit cards. They are strong. They are independent. They are equal. They can do anything you can do, and they can do it better. Okay. So if they can do anything you can do and they can do it better, she should be able to pay off her own credit card. Right? I had given her and all of that stopped when we broke up. Like I said, there is a lot more to this story and I could release a lot more, but I was under the impression that this was nobody's fucking business. But mm, I get why they're wrong. dating. Fanboy and Marie wrong. have a- wrong. No, 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 this, this is internet drama. This is everyone's business, especially the parts that are funny. Because we need a break. We need a break from the fact that the Jews control everything, that you can't question Israel on a college campus, that there's going to be a nuclear war with China over Taiwan because nobody can make silicon chips in the United States because of diversity hiring. Okay, we need a break from all of this stuff. And it needs to be funny. And so, yes, this is everyone's business. This needs to be on the Internet all the fucking time. In fact, the entire internet should be nothing other than cat videos, pictures of women getting owned, and then videos of the Maddox Masterson and the fucking Masterson July internet drama. That should be it. That should be the only four things that are allowed on the internet. Well, great one. What about your podcast? You know what? If the internet was only cat videos, women getting owned, and Dick Masterson drama, I would be more than willing to have my podcast taken off the internet in exchange for that. A lot in common. They're both obsessed with me. They both owe me money. And True. here's the kicker. They're both fans. That's right. Fans. I actually met Marie at one of my book signings. And there it is. So, hey, I, I met this woman at my book signing and she had me sign the top of her ass where the tramp stamp goes. Yes, this is obviously dating material. Now, if Maddox would have just taken her out and banged her a couple of times, I'd have been fine with that. This is, this is how Maddox met 80s girl. And he thought this was dating material? Guys, you got to get some fucking standards. Banging material, yes. Dating material, no. Here's the actual moment we met. Ladies and gentlemen, in Oh, and look, and she's got a fucking tattoo over there. I just noticed that. She's got she's so she's got also the tattoos going on. I mean look, she doesn't <clears throat> I mean she doesn't she's not a terrible body. Like I say, she's bangable. 
but you don't date that. Introducing Fangirl. But as I mentioned, I want nothing to do with either of these losers, especially Marie. And I thought I made that very clear when I blocked her on Instagram, Snapchat, <laughs> Facebook, and Facebook no. again on both no. my public and private. No, because you see, women are so great at communicating that they don't understand that when you block them on social media, that means you don't want to talk to them anymore. That means you want to talk to them even more than you did before. Counts. The only reason I found out she had an Instagram account was because I caught her viewing my stories. Maybe she was looking for more of my friends to date. And when I blocked her on Instagram, she even created a new account that she used to keep tabs on me and my girlfriend at the time. This is very creepy. Now, I know you're thinking that that email was... <laughs> See, what I'm talking about, maybe she's looking for more of my friends to date. This is good. This is comedy. It was pretty clear cut, but you know what would really be the final nail in oh this coffin? God, what would... If only there was some kind of proof what? in writing that oh. I was over her and that I'd already moved on. Oh. Like, I don't know, some kind of time stamped letter telling her that we could be friends only no, if she's mistake. okay with the fact that I'm dating someone new. That would be really damning, wouldn't it? <laughs> if only I had such oh. a letter. Well, you knew this was coming. The very <laughs> next day, I responded to her sob story email, and I said, you have to be honest with yourself and with me. If you can't get past the fact that I'm dating someone new, then it will take you some time before we can normalize our friendship. Okay, men do not use phrases like normalize our friendship, especially not when talking to a woman, especially not when talking to a woman who is your ex-girlfriend, Especially when talking to a woman who is your ex-girlfriend whom you met by signing your name in her tramp stamp location. So this means Fanboy's entire narrative, all of it, all of his smears, his excuses for being a scumbag, and his constant and gratuitous attacks, all the stalking and harassment, and everything that's been said and done to try to justify the harassment, all of it was based on a lie. All of it. I am a manipulative prick. You are. I know I true. have that in me. Oh, no, we know. People shouldn't have to release private emails, texts, and transcripts to clear their name of slander. None of this is anyone's fucking business. But if somebody becomes obsessed and makes it their business model to slander you, or an obsessed ex keeps trying to fuck with you, how much of your time and energy should you have to devote to addressing it? Just enough to be funny. That's how much. Just enough to be funny and then no more. But if I have to tell the story, I'm gonna tell you the full story and I'm gonna right. divulge details about these morons that they might not like Good. in order to paint a fuller picture. Let's do it. Fanboy and Marie started secretly dating after he drove her home drunk from a wedding we were attending. This made me livid, but not for the reasons you might think. While we were dating, she forbade me from having a single drop of alcohol in my system when I drove. Wow, my, uh, my tramp stamp girlfriend forbade me from having alcohol before a dry. Okay, so that's called beta. Your woman does not forbid you from doing things. You forbid her from doing things. Even a single beer with dinner because Marie had a DUI on her record. Of course she did. You, there it is, guys. There it is. See, I am woman. I made this mistake. You must be punished for my mistake. And women wonder why men hate them. Women wonder why men are indifferent to them. Women, women wonder why men stand there and watch niggers beating women up and don't do anything to help them. She got a DUI, therefore he must be punished. She got a DUI, therefore she has to be protected from getting another one because she cannot suffer any consequences of her actions. She said if I got pulled over, she could risk getting a second DUI. That's, yeah. It, it, right? Everything has to be about protecting the women. Women won't lift a finger to do jack shit for you, but you're supposed to sacrifice everything for them. And they have no idea why the current state of hostilities you know, exist between men and women.
California law states that if a passenger grabs the wheel if a driver becomes incapacitated, that could count as operating while intoxicated. Yeah, of course but it does. But for the record, had I known that Fanboy California. was dating my ex behind my back, would I have ended the podcast? Absolutely! Because she made it clear she wasn't over me, and I sure shit didn't want her hanging around my apartment all the time. And because she violently punched a door while moving out, and surprise, surprise, she didn't pay for that either. Oh, a woman did violence. Wow, well, imagine that. It really bums me out, too, because that was my favorite door. She's <laughs> literally a Kyle meme. Another reason is that around the time they started dating, Fanboy started using insults that my ex used to call me. Mm. I'd known him for over nine years, and he'd never used these insults before until he secretly started dating her. That is she kind seemed of a to tip be feeding him insults to use against me, and it's quite a head fuck to start hearing insults that your ex used to call you being filtered through someone you thought was your friend. He knew it was wrong, but he did it anyway. And again, you don't have to take my word for it. Those are literally his words. I started dating his ex-girlfriend, who is a teacher. Uh, teacher! Uh, whatever. Whatever. I did it. Uh, I, knew, I, knew, I knew it was wrong. I did it anyway. <laughs> I knew it was wrong. <laughs> I, just in case you're wondering, guys, yes, I think Dick Masterson's show is funny. I think he may, you know, he's funny, but I'm, I'm not like holding him up as a paragon of, of, of anything. Like, I don't, I mean, he's funny. That doesn't mean I agree with him. I don't think he's a good person. Earlier when he said that he is manipulative or whatever, yeah, he is. He is a manipulating prick. You can tell that from listening to his show. That doesn't mean he isn't funny. He's funny sometimes, not all the time. But as for my letter, for the record, I have to admit that I did write some really embarrassing and cringy text messages oh, to her. Yes. And in the interest of full disclosure, all right, I'm going to read some of them to you right now. All right, let's here are get some text cringe. messages I sent. I've ached for it since the second we met. Just to feel you in that atavistic way. Atavistic? I could fuck you forever. Raw Ooh. and pounding and soft like a romance Oh novel. my god. I know, I know. It's super embarrassing. I also told her that I just wanted her to say and be anything and I would worship it. Worship. And not to hide how happy and eager I was to please her. I don't know how I'll ever live this down. In I fact, I even either. wrote her a book of poetry. This is no super embarrassing. Way. But here is a snippet of a poem called, I Want to Believe. I want oh my to God. believe that love is more than a neurochemically induced state of insanity involving the cohesion of two projected matrices. <laughs> I want to believe that it's more than animalistic lust what? and raw atavistic uh, fear and greed. What's this atavistic thing? Look, I know I'm thing? going to be ruthlessly mocked for this, that I wrote that as an adult and in that handwriting. That's bad. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. I think I accidentally read the wrong thing. These are actually poems and text messages written by Fanboy. <laughs> That's right. One of his exes recently did to him what he did to me, yes. and it's much, much worse. He actually sent those text messages to her and gave her a book full of poems. I know, I adore it, and I've ached for it since the second we met. Just to feel you in that atavistic way. I don't know what atavistic means. I need to look at I love your mind too, Jamie. And I want to hear you. Yeah, I love your mind too. Oh my God, this is beta. <laughs> that she made public in what may possibly go down as the most hilarious example of what goes around, comes around. His jilted ex released pages and pages of this embarrassing, sappy bullshit. Remember, and links to this will be in the show notes because Maddox put it on his website. <laughs> I, look, look at his handwriting. It was a grown fucking man who makes millions of dollars a year with a podcast. Look at his handwriting. For earlier when I said his book treatment was the second most embarrassing thing I'd ever read in my entire life. Well, this is the first, and there's a lot more where this came from, and it's one of the many reasons it's a bad idea to secretly date your friend's ex. But the funniest and most tragic reason of all is that sometimes she might be using you to get back to the person she's still in love with. And I know how they both feel about each other, because after we broke up, Fanboy told me that he always thought that she was fat, and she but came she up is. with a nickname for him because he didn't know how to parallel park and thinks that horror movies are too scary. That That's nickname gay. is Daxipad, and he Daxipad? hates it. Pad? That is hilarious. Daxi pad. But to her credit, it's pretty hilarious. It's hilarious. <clears throat> All right. So apparently, apparently, this is a whole series that Maddox is doing. Because as you saw right there, it said, what is this? This is chapter 11. 
I haven't wa- I only watched one other chapter and we're about to watch that chapter. So I don't know I don't know what else Maddox talks about in all the other ones. Maybe I'll run through them sometime. Hey, Who knows? I'm your biggest fan. All right. Whoops, come on. All right. So after watching for the first time the episode we just watched after it was sent to me by by this wonderful person who sent me that link. Thank you again. That that was orgasmic. The first time I watched this, I was <clears throat> literally Hitler on the fucking floor with laughter. I'm not making that up. At one point, I fell out of my chair sideways, 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 sideways. Because I'm sitting on the little office chair here. That doesn't have armrest or anything like that. So there's nothing to hold me in. And I did literally, Hitler, fall out of the fucking chair. All right. So anyhow, after I watched that, I went to Maddox's YouTube channel. And I'm scanning the names of the other episodes. And I saw the name of this one, which is The Dark Secret of Lolly and the Man Trying to Normalize It. And I said, well, he must be talking about Dick because we all know how... In love with pedophiles, Dick is. Dick just if Dick makes it an entire episode of his podcast without having a pedophile on there, it's like a fucking major accomplishment. So here we go. <clears throat> For over 20 years, I've run one of the longest-running humor sites on the internet. I've published books, worked on TV shows, and even video games. Along the way, I've met thousands of fans. Most of them have been awesome, but some, unfortunately, have become obsessed and tried to get into my personal life. This is the story of what happens when fans become stalkers. The whole fans become stalkers thing... I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know what made him think that this should be billed as when fans become stalkers. It should have been, it should have been billed as something like when your business partner turns into an asshole or, or, or something. But I just, I just don't get the whole fans becoming stalkers aspect of this. I mean, I, I kind of do, but it's, it's just such a stretch. I think there's better things Maddox could have called this. That's neither Maddox, here Maddox and that. Oh, Maddox. Maddox is Maddox. 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 Pedo projection. Okay, now, this is what I'm talking about. Maddox and Masterson are exactly the same. Both of them are obsessed with pedophiles. Just in different ways. Masterson is obsessed with defending and normalizing pedophiles. Maddox is obsessed with attacking, denigrating pedophiles because Maddox wants to ingratiate himself to the Hollywood crowd. And, of course, the movers and the shakers in Hollywood are all pedophiles. So Masterson is attempting to ingratiate himself to pedophiles by defending pedophiles. Maddox is attempting to ingratiate himself to pedophiles by attacking pedophiles. Both of them worship pedophiles. Maddox, Maddox, Maddox. While the business model of slander was profitable, Fanboy wasn't just content with doxing me and attacking my sources of income, he actively spread lies about me to try to hurt my reputation as well. In September of 2018... Well, you gotta admit, Maddox, you didn't exactly help your reputation. ...he accused me of being a pedophile lover, which is absolutely slander. And what's worse is that it's all projection. Well, as with yeah. almost everything he's accused me of, it's either something he's actively doing or is something he's done. Got to admit. For example, he played a clip titled Maddox is right here. I mean, there's a lot of I will accuse George. That's Maddox's real name for those of you who don't know. His name is George. I will accuse Maddox of being bald. I'll accuse Maddox of not being funny. I'll accuse Maddox of, you know, lawsuits that he shouldn't have instigated. I'll accuse Maddox of being a weird dork. 
I've never seen the slightest indication anywhere that Maddox is a pedophile. I again, I I could be wrong. See how I'm not a woman. I haven't watched and read everything Maddox has ever done in his entire life. I have never seen Maddox defend pedophiles, praise pedophiles, talk to pedophiles as if they're normal. Whereas Masterson, as I, he can't stay away from kissing pedophile ass. So for Dick to accuse Maddox of pedophilia or being a pedophile or a pedophile supporter, whatever the fuck it may have been, yeah, that's a little ridiculous. Maddox loves pedophiles and made a lot of similar implications. There's the supercut of Maddox loves pedophiles. This is not only false, but it's interesting coming from Fanboy because there was that time he publicly defended this person who pled guilty in a child sex case. Mm -hmm. The guy claimed he had sex with a 16 year old girl who used a fake ID. So this whole thing, you guys remember this? Cody Wilson, uh, the 16 year old chick. Guys, and once again, you can't trust women. Did she really have a fake ID? I mean, maybe she did. This is why you don't trust chicks. I mean, she's 16. She can get an abortion, right? If she can get an abortion, she'd be, she should be able to have sex. Well, that's weird, because even if she did, did she also use a fake body or a fake face? Okay, uh, what do you mean by that? Have you, Maddox, have you seen any 16-year-olds? There's a lot of 16-year-olds that... How, how do you look at a person's body and know... The difference between 16 and 18. That doesn't look like she was an adolescent in high school? Uh, high school girls who are 18 are legally fuckable. And that's to say that you have permission from the government to fuck them. Okay? You might be thinking, well, maybe she looked old for her age. Nope. In fact, the detective said that if anyone were to mistake her age, it would be because she looks younger than 16. Oh, detectives, because I'm sure these detectives are a trustworthy source, because these detectives has, of course, never had sex with underage girls. Again, I'm not, I, I'm, we're not going to delve into trying to find pictures of the chick that Cody Wilson... I, I don't give a shit. I don't fucking... It's not that important. I don't really care. And boy sided with a child sex offender and blamed the victim despite his admission of guilt. Well, maybe that was just a one-off. But there... Wait. See, and I don't know anything about this. Wait, wait, was she a hooker? Was she like, did she show up and want money for this? See, I don't know anything about this case. So, I could be wrong. But if she showed up saying, I will have sex with you for money. I was going to ask the question, then I realized the answer. I was going to say, why is he getting in trouble for this? And I remembered, well, she's a woman. She can't be held accountable for her actions. Never mind. We're not talking about Cody Wilson. There was that time that Fanboy also said, and I quote, mm. everyone wants to fuck 17-year-olds. Okay, they do. They do, Maddox. See, now Maddox sounds like Lauren Southern. There's no such thing as the wall. 40-year-old women are attractive. You know, all these men who want to have sex with women who are younger and prettier than me are just pedophiles. See, now all of a sudden Maddox has shifted from being funny, which he was in the previous video. Now he's just trying to suck up to the Hollywood elite who are all Jewish pedophiles by attacking people for saying everyone wants to have sex with 17-year-olds, which they do. All men who actually have significant levels of testosterone, would like to have sex with 17-year-old girls. This is, and, and the fact that you, you can't say that because women and beta male cuckolds like Maddox are offended by it illustrates how fucking far our society has fallen into decay. I'm not attracted to 16-year-olds. I'm not attracted to 17-year-olds. Not You're not even, attracted to 17-year-olds? Yeah, what the hell's wrong with you? No, I'm 34. I oh, did. Saying, are you not attracted to 17-year-olds because yes. the law says you can't Yes, be? that's no, exactly. No, I'm not attracted to 17-year-olds because their brains are rotten. Okay, all women's brains are rotten. See, this is... No, I'm, they're, they're not mature. No, no, no. No women are mature. See, this, this is beta male cuck as fuck right here. I'm not attracted to 17-year-olds because their brains are rotten. Do you think when they get older... And after they've had more dick run through them and they've gotten more tattoos and more piercings, do you think their brains are going to stop being rotten? Like what what is what does any of this mean other than 
you're scared to say you're attracted to 17 year olds because you don't have permission from the Jews and the boomers and the government to say that 17 year old girls are attractive. Not all 17 year old girls, of course. That's the thing, too. I, I know we're just this blanket statement not every 17 year old girl is fuckable. Some 17 year old girls are fuckable. The vast majority of them, I wouldn't fuck with Dick Masterson's dick. I'm saying just admit it that you want to, that everyone wants to fuck 17 year olds. No, that, like, not, that's all this guy's not saying. Not everybody wants to fuck 17 year olds. Look at the if, look, look that's at the why main... there's laws against yes. it. Yes, yes, they do. Yes. See, here we go. Dick has a completely valid point right there. The reason it's against the law to fuck a 17 year old is because so many people want to do it. The government has to make laws telling you you can't do things because people want to do them. Cocaine is illegal because people want to do cocaine. Murder is illegal because people want to kill other people. Driving over the speed limit is illegal because people want to drive faster than the speed limit because they want to get where they're going because they have shit to do. Things that are illegal are illegal because people want to do them. It's illegal to have sex with eight-year-olds because there are people out there called pedophiles who Dick Masterson defends that want to have sex with eight-year-olds. He was speaking to a guy named Onision who allegedly groomed one of his fans into having sex with him when she eventually turned 18. As and you should. What's the point of having fans if you can't fuck them when they turn 18? See, Maddox said he groomed one of his fans into having sex when she was 18. Well, hold on. She's 18. What's the problem? 18-year-old girls, they could fuck anyone they want to fuck. This is just so... And just like that, Maddox is suddenly right back into beta male cuckold mode. Boy said things during the conversation that made even Onision uncomfortable. That makes no fucking sense. You want to fuck it so there's laws against it? Yes. That yeah, no that's sense. why murder is illegal yes. too, because everyone wants to do it all yes. day. Now, you might be thinking, maybe he's trolling, right? No! After all, every that's time somebody true. gets called out- No! Murder if- God damn! See, as I'm saying, sometimes Dick is right. He's really fucking- Dick is always either really right or really funny or really not right or funny at all. For having really shitty opinions, they usually hide behind the troll shield to pretend like they were just joking. Yeah, people, so, yeah. So, Onision yeah, people gave him that. an easy out by asking if Fanboy was trolling, and he wasn't. No. I don't want to murder all day. Are you trolling? No. I mean, not really. No, like, people the want to kill. you is because they're fucking jealous. jealous. Yes. Like, they don't like that you're getting young, hot pussy yes. doing these things that you're able to get away with. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. When, when you are having sex, I mean, look at, uh, what's his face? Um, God damn it. Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. He, the Leonardo DiCaprio only fucks girls under 25. Every, all the women on the internet hate him. Why? Because he's fucking young, hot pussy. Yes. That yep, sounds respect. all. That sounds all kinds of horrible. What you just said. I don't like oh, that. I don't give a fuck. Look, Look whatever fuck. has to happen to get that little girl on the no, stripper pole. No, yes. No, no. Yeah. All get right. Her. Yes. Look, those are just two examples. <laughs> Everyone can make a mistake twice, right? But then there was that time that he defended a comedian for making sexual advances towards a 16-year-old. He says, I'm in Tempe, let's hang. What's wrong with you? And she says, do you want to meet up tonight? Oh, the predation. Oh, the, the predation? predation. <laughs> I mean, okay, accused of harassing teenage girls. Uh, when she was 16 and he was 34, okay, was, was she, was, did she keep responding? Like she doesn't know how to block somebody on Twitter? or Instagram, or whatever it was. At, the, the, Rossi revealed he had groomed her as a 16-year-old. She posted screenshots of emails that he sent to her when she was 16 as part of a Twitter. Does she not know how to block? Does she not know how to turn off her Twitter account? I mean, she's 16. She can get a fucking abortion. Does she not know how Twitter works? Again, see, it's if you're trotting out like 8-year-olds and shit, okay, I can get... It's really hard for me to get worked up over 16 year olds it's really fucking difficult 16 
to be fair. Well, but and, he's claiming just, he didn't know she was 16. We have to Who protect these innocent, innocent 16 yeah, yeah, no, Yes, no, these no. innocent little 16-year-olds who have had how many miles of cock run through them already? You know, their OnlyFans account where they're putting titty pic. Yes, we have to protect these innocent, pure little 16-year-olds. Uh, Predation of these fucking comedians, these you chuckle fuck, these poor 16-year-old whores. Yeah, I mean, oh my- see, I totally agree with Dick on all of this. So far, I'm with Dick. My God, what are they going to do if they, uh, if they accidentally, accidentally fuck? Right, but now this same 16-year-old, she can go in the bathroom, there could be a tranny in there playing with his dick. And that's okay. But some comedian sends her a message on Twitter, and oh my God, he's a pedophile. See this comedian's cock. Here's the fucking Instagram of this chick. Fucking amazing. Is it legal for me to put this on the show? No. God. Look at this. Yeah. All right, look, that's three examples. Who hasn't made it? But but again, see, and Maddox wants to attack Dick for being a pedophile, but he's totally ignoring all the times, at least so far, that Dick has actually defended, like, real pedophiles like people who fuck eight-year-olds not people who fuck 16-year-olds mistake three times but then there was the time he had an actual pedophile on his show oh the following clip is extremely disturbing this and i gay. usually don't list warnings in my videos so if you don't want to hear it it's skip not ahead that 34 disturbing. seconds from now just deal but with you it you are uh-huh. self-professed uh what is it lollycon yes that's called mentally ill fan yes does that mean I've- that what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that I am a huge fan right. of illustrations mm-hmm. of little girls getting fucked. Now, little girls, <clears throat> is that 16-year-olds or is that 8-year-olds? Oh. <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, see, that makes it. You see what you, when you do that. Yeah. It makes it mo- it makes it very I'm uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Oh, oh, I'm uncomfortable. I have you on my show. I'm asking you these questions, but just like a woman, when you answer my questions, I'm uncomfortable. You're a pedophile. I'm going to have you on my show multiple times. I'm going to defend you every time someone attacks you. But it makes me uncomfortable that you like pictures of little girls getting fucked, but not sufficiently uncomfortable for me to not have you on my podcast multiple times. Just like a fucking woman. Of course it does. But, like, I have to fight for that shit harder than anybody because I like that shit. Now, maybe you're thinking you he can't quite that. predict what a caller is going to say yes, ahead you can. of time. Yeah, you so can. you cut it from the episode and block that caller, right? right? Well, he didn't. No. In fact, the caller, a person named Digibro. Was- now, that guy right there, there's no way anyone could possibly think that guy is a pedophile, right? was invited back on at least eight other times. Yes. Except this pedophile wasn't just a guest. He and Digibro have hung out together. In March of 2019, after the call admitting he's a pedophile, Fanboy invited Digibro, someone who has sexual fantasies about children, Mm -hmm. into his home. They not only spent hours in his home together, but they went out for food and beer afterwards, and Fanboy treated him. I just kind of asked if I could come in. I messaged him just the day before, and he just responded immediately with his home address. He lives in what I would describe as a a very small two-story house. Afterwards, then Dick and I and 80s Girl all went out to lunch. Dick bought us some beers. He's the only person who's openly defended my position. Yes, he's the only person who's openly defended my pedophilia. And that wasn't even the first time they'd met in person. Fanboy downplays this form of child porn by saying it's just illustrations. But these aren't stick figures, and saying they're just illustrations doesn't acknowledge how realistic illustrations can get. For example, this is not a photograph. It was made by hand. And what's worse is that these illustrations are often made using real reference photos of actual child exploitation. Okay, now we're just... Now we're just grasping for straws. Once again, it's, oh my God, it's a drawing. Is she is she underage, guys? It's a fucking drawing. This made made child pornographic images by referencing a picture of a girl. So if I go on the internet and I go to Google Images and I type in twelve year old girl, and a picture comes up, and then I draw a picture of a twelve year old girl getting fucked while looking at a picture of a 12-year-old girl on the internet. 
I mean, we're going for a really giant stretch here. Look, if you actually stick your dick inside of a 12-year-old girl, you should be shot in the head. Anything that doesn't go that far should just be ignored. Sorry, guys. This shit. Hey, they looked at a picture of a 12-year-old girl while thinking about having sex. Or Just stop it already. But like I said, see, George is so desperate to ingratiate himself to the Hollywood elite, the Jewish pedophiles that control Hollywood, that he's doing all of this. He could be doing funny things to entertain people like he did in the previous video, but no, apparently George's sense of humor and his creativity can only surface on rare occasions. The rest of the time, he just spends his life talking about Masterson, just as much as Masterson spends his life talking about Maddox, and trying to to turn everything into pedophilia. I don't believe there's anything innocent about this, but Fanboy doubled down and even publicly announced that he would masturbate to lollipop. Okay, now see, that's weird. <clears throat> he even tagged some of his- I was gonna say something, I couldn't even come up with anything good to say. That's just fucking weird. Friends like they're his own personal accountability pedos. And if he actually went through <laughs> right, with that it, was funny. it's possible that some of these illustrations were made using real oh reference Oh my god. The, the, and see, that's just fucking retarded. These Ill images had been made from photographs of actual girls. But that's, that's just stupid. Which could be a felony. If you're aroused god. by illustrations of adults having sex, it stands to reason that you'd also be aroused by seeing the real thing. Well. Same goes for children. This person is a pedophile. And then Fanboy invited another guest to his home who claims he had sex with a 13-year-old. When I was 18, I hooked up with a girl who was 13. I'm now 20. Uh, obviously, I don't hook up with 13-year-olds anymore. I have to tell you that because it's so obvious that I have to make sure and tell you that. Uh, 18 and 13. I mean, honestly, 13 is a little out of bounds, no matter how old you are. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go with that. 13. I mean, unless unless you're 14, if you're 14 or 15 and you're 13, do girls even have pussies when they're 13? I mean, I know they are pussies when they're 13, but they have a pussy when they're 13. Nine. And look at these chicks. Obviously, I don't hook up with 13 year olds anymore at all. Uh, and I didn't after I got older from that age. But do you think that that's like so outrageously bad? Yes. Uh, bullshit. They're, both of those girls are sitting there thinking, I'd really like to fuck him. Statutory rape is specifically defined in some states as having sex with a 13 year old with harsh penalties when the age difference is five years or older. And when confronted about it, here's what Fanboy said. I just know I have never been a pedophile or a rapist. Wrong. And you really don't yeah. sound like you don't think I did anything wrong. Um, no, I, I don't really care about the 18 and the 13 thing. I don't care about the 18, 13 thing either. I just care about the 13 thing, and 13 is too young for you to be fucking her. You know, all, all jokes about getting them at 16 and training them to do the dishes and blowjobs aside. At 16, I don't have a problem with. 13, eh, yeah, you're, there's something wrong with you. I mean, and it's not go. my kid. I don't fucking care. And, and this is one of my biggest problems with Masterson. It's not my kid. I don't care. I don't care what happens to children because they're not my children. I don't care that they get raped. I don't care that they get pedophiled. I don't care that they get injected with shit. You know, I don't care that they are given hormones. I don't care that the school system fucks them. Like, I, I don't care about these people because they're not my children. And if you do say you care about them, then Dick's response is, well, they're not your kids. Why do you care? And, of course, the answer is because I have to live in the society that these children are going to shape. And like a woman, Dick doesn't understand cause and effect. That when these children get fucked up, mentally, psychologically, emotionally fucked up, and then they go forth into the world, they carry that fucked up with them, right? The world doesn't cure them of being fucked up. It's like, remember, remember guys, remember when we were wrong? Remember when you and I, this was years ago, all these stupid people in college, they were majoring in shit like the, the fucking 
ethnic studies and the the whatevers, the diversity studies and all this shit. And we all sat there and said, that's the stupidest shit ever. When these people get out of college and they hit the real world, they're not going to be able to find jobs and yada, yada. And then what happened? They came out of college and they got jobs in the diversity department and they changed the workforce. They changed the companies. They changed the workplace into an image of college where now everything revolves around diversity and buzz phrases and racial quotas and elevating women and coloreds and trannies and homos and oppressing white men. They hit reality and they blew right through it and they altered reality to make it what they wanted it to be. And all the heterosexual white men in the United States just went right along with it because we're a bunch of fucking cowards. And so all these children that are out here getting fucked up, they're not going to you know, turn 18 and hit reality and suddenly stop being emotionally, mentally, psychologically damaged. They're going to take their emotional, mental, psychological damage and they're going to fucking impose that on the rest of us. So yeah, I do fucking care what happens to other people's children, dick. You fucking moron. Because not all of us are making millions of dollars a year on a podcast and can just sit in our fucking house with our fucking chubby little chick who used to be our friend's ex-girlfriend and might be using us to get back at him. We don't really know. Not all of us have that level of insulation. Some of us have to actually live in this society surrounded by these other people. And then there is Fanboy's outspoken defense of the movie Cuties. I could go on oh my and God. on, but suffice it that to say that almost saga. everything he's accused me of doing is either something he's done or is actively doing. It's almost always projection. In fact, like a just woman. before that clip I played earlier of him saying Maddox loves pedophiles, he literally downplayed having sex with a 17-year-old in the same breath. You can't make this shit up. Plus 17, man. Come on. Yeah. Give me a break. I guess. Give me a break. All right, here, here's Maddox Loves, there's the super cut of Maddox Loves Pedophiles. Thankfully, the majority of my fans being played by a man who actively defends and supports and has pedophiles on his show. Realized that I haven't talked about the smear campaign in part because it became a legal matter, as you'll see shortly. They gave me the benefit of doubt and abstained from joining these smears and attacks, and to them, I give you my thanks. But some people didn't. They were malicious, vile, and gullible dipshits who joined in on the doxing, smears, and attacks. They judge people they don't know with facts they don't have. They are the worst elements of mob mentality and represent everything I hate about cancel culture. I don't know if you can talk about Jews like that on the internet without getting in trouble. They spread lies, gossip, and rumors without ever fact-checking or even considering that the person they're oh, getting most of sorry, their narrative- sorry. I thought he was talking about Jews. He's talking about the media. Oh wait, they are Jews. From has a profit motive and is using his friends as pawns in an elaborate revenge scheme. And again, those aren't my words, those are his. What am I? Just a guy using my friends as pawns in some kind of elaborate revenge scheme yes. against an angry Armenian man? Yes. Comedian Andrew Schultz talked about the phenomenon of online mobs and cancel culture. He said it best when he said that the internet mob doesn't care about the truth if no. the lie is more interesting. If it's more funny, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, we're, I'm doing this video right now with this whole Madison, Madison, who's Madison? This whole Maddox Masterson thing, what do I care about more? The actual objective truth or just how funny it is? The truth is, the truth is, I care about how funny it is less, more, rather, I can't talk. I care about how funny it is more than I care about what's true and isn't true. The internet mob is swift, brutal, and doesn't give a fuck about the truth, right. but the lie is more interesting. Yes. I mean, we're at a place where people are guilty until proven innocent. Uh, we've and been there a long time. even if they're vindicated, time. the apology is always much quieter than the accusation. Yes. I don't want to say yeah. or do anything to risk falling back into the good graces of this dumb mob of gullible dipshits. I can proudly say that purging these losers and idiots from my fan base is one of the proudest accomplishments of my career. Please help me celebrate this loss with the hashtag Maddox loss because I proudly have. Whew. 
All right. Anyway, that was that. So there's a little bit of the drama. It's good times all around.